Hey y'all, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. <clears throat> I'm in the bathroom again. It's just quieter in here. <clears throat> the Vikings premiere tonight is a two-hour show. It's a wild show. Chris started watching it um, years ago, and he loves it very much. So, I have a terrible migraine, and I decided to come on with y'all anyway. I don't know if I've got a migraine because Chris has been watching the Vikings for about three hours or if I've just got a migraine because I have a migraine. But I had to go today to have an MRI done on my back and it was forever long. I didn't realize it. She said, you're going to be here for a while. So it took 45 minutes without contrast and 45 minutes with contrast. So I was there for a while. I actually fell asleep in the MRI thing. A lot of people probably could say they wouldn't do that because it's so loud, but I can. Uh, they put earplugs in your ears and then they put something over your ears and you can still hear it, but still. Anyway, even if I had a migraine, I wanted to speak to y'all because I didn't last night. I'm gonna read the 10 commandments tonight. And uh, we're not going to go through them in detail because I want to talk about each one of them and what they mean. Because some of them, some of them are taken kind of out of context. Although none of us could truly go our life without breaking a t one of the Ten Commandments for sure. So we're all guilty, every single one of us, just like the Bible says we are, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Right? Amen. Um, but yesterday I went to Hobby Lobby and Michael's, and at Michael's I got the long, the long, um, garland, but it's not garland, it looks like pine needles, and I got at Hobby Lobby, I got these little, um, it has a tiny pine cone with a berry, couple of berries and leaves on it. Um, that's an accent piece that you can just stick in things. So I got 10 of those. And I fixed two of my um, light fixtures. I put, I put the garland up there and I put the little extras up there and I made a few bows. And so I'll show you guys those, but probably not until tomorrow because I haven't done the living room one yet. So I've got the one done in the dining room and I've got the one done in the kitchen, but I've still got to do the one in the living room. And as soon as I get it done, then I'll show you guys. Um, yesterday, I think, come on, because I was so tired. Today, I'm tired and have a migraine, but I'm, but I'm going to talk a little bit about the Lord anyway. When I started reading this, um, I was glad I did, just like I always am. Now, let me flip to where I want to start. I came in here and I sat down on the floor in front of this heater. And then I went, oh no, I don't have my Bible. And then I looked, and of course there's a Bible right here in the bathroom. Because there's a Bible in every room in my house. Because I love them so much. So I was like, yes, there's a Bible. So anyway, today, I like this part. I don't have the ESV in front of me. This is my KJV study Bible, which I'm the most familiar with anyway. And I'm going to read these to you guys. And some of y'all might think this is boring. But if you were smart, you'd listen because you know who wrote this? The God of the universe, the God that created you as a person as your soul, every part of you. So, let's hear what he has to say, okay? Marlene says they have the flu. I'm so sorry, Marlene. Um, and Bonnie's telling me about magnesium. You know what, about Bonnie, I might start doing that because over the last about three or four days, I've had cramps like, you know, like when we were kids, we called them Charlie Horses. Um, I've had some cramps like that just uh, out of the blue just start to pull but I have fibromyalgia so 
but it's been acting up. I don't know if it's this weather or what. But I might, I might take you up on that and take some magnesium. I got some. Okay, we're going to start in Exodus chapter 20. Um, God has a way of helping my head when um, I go to do something. I'm so strange. I'm not like most women with migraine. Most women with a migraine go and they lay down in the bed in the dark. And every time I do that, it's like my, my head just gets bigger and it just pounds more and more and more. And it just like... So if I get up and I do something else, it takes my mind off of some of the pain. And I know that sounds crazy to some, but it, I've been doing that since I was in my early 20s. And it really makes a difference. Just like getting up and talking to y'all has made a difference in my headache. It's still there, but I don't notice it as much. I know that sounds goofy, but it's true. Okay, it says Ten Commandments for Israel. Okay? And God spake all of these words, saying, I am the Lord, thy God, which has brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above and here I thought of angels. You know how many angels we have sitting around the house? Listen to this. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is heaven, in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Now, now when I say you can't have an angel, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying you don't need to pray to an angel. You don't need to pray to anything but our God, okay? Um, he is a jealous God. So, I'm sorry if you're Catholic, but there's nowhere in this Bible, um, and I'm being serious, there's nowhere in this Bible that tells you that it's okay to pray to angels or saints or anything other than God Almighty. Our God Almighty is it. He is the one worthy of all praise and honor and glory forever. Amen. Okay? Now, when I say that, God the Father is the same as Jesus Christ the Son. And He does allow us to worship Jesus. Okay? But nothing else. Alright? So just remember that. Um, and if you can show me a place in the Bible where it says it's okay to worship these other things, you send me a message because it's not in here, okay? Now, it says, um, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I am the Lord the God, and I'm a jealous, and I'm a jealous God. And he tells us that he's going to visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those that hate him. That is a big deal. So if you hate God, or if you decide that you're mad at God and you're going to hate God, you're not the only one that's going to pay for it. Your children, their children, and their children. That's how many kids and families that is going to be in this bondage of sin because of your actions. Don't think that God doesn't let sin trickle down into the family because he does. Because he, he tells us right here he does it. So let's try to um, not hate God. Okay? It says he shows mercy unto thousands of them that love him and keep his commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Most people think that means saying a bad word, and it does not, okay? 
it's a heck of a lot bigger than that, okay? So we will talk about that the next time we come on live. I will talk about what does taking the Lord's name in vain really mean. And I would love for you guys to study that. Look it up. Um, study it in the scripture. Uh, look at some commentary. Try to look it up and pray that God can help you um, discern that scripture, okay? The next one says... Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy maidservant. I mean, their man, yeah, the manservant, the maidservant, nor thy cattle nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. He didn't even want the cattle to work, y'all. And so many of us today are so guilty of working on the Sabbath. Even our church workers work hard on the Sabbath um, and do more than what God intended us for, the, for us to do. Um, it says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that the day your days may be long upon the land which the Lord Thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Okay? And then he says, and all the people saw thunder, it, and then it says, all the people saw the thunders, the lightnings, the noise of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking, and when the people saw it, they removed and stood far off. They said to Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear, but let not God speak with us, lest we die. They were scared. And Moses said, Fear not, for God has come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. Okay? God doesn't do this just because he does it so that we do not sin. Okay? The people stood far off, and Moses drew near unto a thick darkness where God was. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. You, will, you should not make gods of silver, neither shall you make gods of gold. Then he talks about altars, okay? So I'm going to stop there. And we'll talk tomorrow about what does it really mean to take the Lord's name in vain. And what was he meaning by that? Because the majority of Christians that I know automatically assume that it just means not to use his name in a, in a curse word or a bad word. And that's not what it means at all, really. Okay? So let's see if we can figure it out and find out over the next few days before I can come back. Maybe I'll be here tomorrow. Maybe I won't. Y'all know how I am. I get here when I'm able to get here. Um, I hope you love me anyway because I, I just can't do it every day. I have a family and a life and all the, all those wonderful things. and um, But I feel like I should come on here and talk with y'all. But I think two to three times a week is plenty for a Bible study. Um, this thing's cooled off. It's actually cooler. I mean, it's actually warmer outside than it was a few nights ago when I came in the bathroom. <laughs> It echoes in here, and you can hear me really loud, don't it? Um, I hope y'all have a blessed night. I have taken my sumatriptan. Sumatriptan actually thins the blood, causes the blood to, to free, free, flow freely through the blood vessels. Um, it is not a pain medication. A lot of people who have migraines think they need something for pain. Pain medicine does not work at all for migraines. I... I've had so many surgeries, and I've never had a surgery yet that I didn't get a migraine. And I could be on morphine, 
and all these heavy drugs actually I don't, I don't take morphine because I don't do well on it but I could be on a lot of heavy drugs and still have a terrible headache but if I get a sumatriptan or a trip to of any kind my headache goes away and it is actually a drug that does it actually thins up the blood and causes your blood to flow through your um, blood veins easier that's what it does and it works like a charm um, and Jim and Sue says, no matter how hard we try, we all break the commandments, not on purpose. It happens to all of us. Just thank God we are forgiven. Um, let's see what it says. Ask the right way. I think that says ask the right way. Okay. Yes, we do. We break them. And that's just, I think they were there to help the people of Israel. Yes, we don't live in the Old Testament anymore. Yes, we are not a part of Israel, those people that God was talking to, but he gives us these things as examples, okay? And it was to show Israel what sin was. And it was to show Israel how to be good, you know, what you really needed to do to be good. Although, in the New Testament, in the Old Testament, we figured out nobody could be good and nobody was good. No matter what, so he actually gave us the ultimate sacrifice. And the last two um, verses in this chapter, when he gives the, them the Ten Commandments, he also tells them about the altar and their sacrifices. They were to sacrifice for their sin, okay? And we don't have to do that anymore. Praise the Lord, right? Uh, coming up on the birthday of Christ. No, it wasn't the real birthday of Christ. Who cares? What's the big deal? It's still when we celebrate our wonderful Lord and Savior's birth in Bethlehem. It doesn't have to be the right uh, day. It doesn't have, none of that, that's, none of that matters. What matters is that we love him enough to celebrate his birth this time of year. What matters is that there is peace on earth more on Christmas Day probably than any other day of the year all over the world. That's what matters. What matters is Jesus is real and he's alive and he's with us. And I wish every day could be like Christmas, but it's not. Uh, but it is a time that most of us do reflect his love, okay? And we should be thankful for that. Whether we're alone or whether we're with family, we should still be grateful that we have a day to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. And without his death and bur the death, burial, and resurrection, we wouldn't have the salvation we do. So, we, of course, we think of that too. Um... I hope y'all have a blessed day. I hope um, <sighs> y'all get some rest. I get to watch the Vikings for two hours, and it is wild. It is a wild show. And no, it's not very biblical, but it is entertainment that my husband absolutely loves. It is very a manly type show. Um, let's see. What was I going to say? Um, when I... Jimisus takes care of you and don't overdo. I want to, Masu. I I try. I took a nap in, during the MRI today. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll let y'all know how the MRI goes. I'm hoping it, it. I'm hoping for sure it's good, right? And um, and we'll find out in a few days. I'm sure. Um. Stacy says she lives in Bethlehem, Georgia, where every day is like Christmas. I guess that's what that says. I can't see every single word on the message because the bar that holds up my phone covers up part of it. Chris made chili today. I didn't have to cook. So when I got home from my MRI, supper was made. I have the best man in the whole wide world, and I do thank God for him every day. Um, let's say our prayers, and it's good to see everybody, and let's pray for each other and love on each other. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for this book. We thank you for 
Moses and Israel. And we thank you for these Ten Commandments that you gave these people. And we are sorry that even after giving them, they bowed to those images that you asked them not to. And Moses breaks them. And we'll see that coming up probably in a few more lessons from now. Um, because we all fail and we all come short of the glory of God, just like you say in your word. There's nothing good in us. No, not one, just like you say. It is your son and his death and your Holy Spirit that comes to live inside of us that creates something good in us. Without that, we would be nothing. And our life here would have no meaning and no purpose. And we thank you for adopting us as your children and letting us live in the age of grace so that this opportunity is available to us. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and we, may we, throughout this season, keep him in mind when we're decorating, when we're wrapping gifts, and when we're doing things. And I pray that each and every person watching this program has received Jesus Christ as their personal Savior because that is truly the gift that we celebrate at Christmas. I hope and pray that they have reached out, grabbed this gift, and they have the Holy Spirit in their heart. Just be with each and every one of us. Help us be good examples. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Janine says, yes, you do have a good man. I sure do. Lord, Lord knows I do. A lot of people think that, um, and they really do. They think because I'm so bossy, you know, that I boss him and he just does everything I say and he don't. He's definitely, there's a lot of things he don't allow me to do. And I shouldn't say allow because, I mean, if I really want something deep down and he knows I do, he would never tell me no. But he does draw the limit on spending and, and, and on some things that I want. And so I would be lying to act like I could just get out and do anything, you know. Um, and he wouldn't leave me if I did, but he might pout a few days. And I really don't like to see him pout. My husband is not mean to me. He just pouts. And that really drives me nuts, you know. If he gets upset, he pouts. Um... And then I don't have anybody to talk to for a day or so. And so I try to uh, be good. I hope, um, and he's a wonderful man. He really is. He taught me how to communicate with a spouse because my mother and daddy never knew how to communicate with each other. Um, I lived in a very loud, open, expressive home. And they said things they shouldn't say to each other. And Chris just put his foot down in the very beginning of our relationship and said, look, we're not going to yell at each other. We're not going to call each other names because we can't take it back. Um, and so we made a pack, you know, and if we get really mad, we just say, look, you're making me really mad. And then we stop and we kind of, you know, stop doing whatever we're doing and most women that would drive them crazy because they want to keep on they want to keep talking and they want to drive their husband crazy and got to talk to him you know and you got to talk to him before you go to sleep you do not wait until everything's calmed down and then talk to each other um and i used to think chris was crazy but he's right because now we've been with each other for 19 years and we haven't said a bunch of things that we shouldn't have said and we don't have to take words back that we would have said if we were angry and had kept talking, especially me and my big mouth. Oh, my Lord. So I'm thankful for that. Um, and if you've never, um, if you've never practiced that in a relationship, whether it's with your children or your spouse or your mother, um, then try it. I mean, me and my mama, whew, we would get into it, but I love her and I miss her. Uh, we were a lot alike, so we would butt heads. Just about stupid things, too, you know, just stupid things, but I do miss her. I'm sure y'all miss your um, mamas and daddies and, and children and husbands that have passed on um, this time of year, too. 
but we are to look for the future and look in our not look backwards and, and dwell on it and wallow in sorrow. We're to be happy in the Lord, okay? Y'all have a good night and be blessed. And if you watch the Vikings, it comes on the two-hour premiere tonight. It's, I, I don't even know what channel it comes on. Probably the History Channel, something like that, but be prepared for some wild stuff if you're going to watch it. All right, see y'all later. Love you. Bye. Oh, and I tried to post all day on Color Valley Cooks, and it wouldn't post for nothing for me. Nothing. So, I don't know. I'm thinking about making a lemon cake tomorrow. Ever since the holidays and I got all this sweet stuff, I've just been craving sugar. So, maybe I'll cook something good tomorrow for y'all. Bye. I love you.